All right, well, this is, uh, I wish I got the, the video of getting up here. Um, this is like built in the side of a mountain here, and I think it's called Clarion, Clarion PA off of 70 here, uh, just outside, I guess, well, not too far from Pittsburgh and just outside Washington, PA. So I gotta make a circle here in this tight little square spot, hopefully without ripping the front end off the International with the trailer swing. And uh, I don't know how I'm gonna fucking do that. I'm not gonna be able to do that with that wall here. How the hell? All right, we're gonna have to figure out something here because this is a tight little spot here, guys. So. I don't know how I'm gonna whip this trailer the hell around. Cause we got the truck behind there. I would've had to practically back in here. If this guy wasn't here, it'd be easy. So this is uh, one of those little Pennsylvania built in the side of a mountain into a little tiny town spot here. And I can't imagine how this place is if this is full of trucks and stuff. So I'm gonna try to whip around here after I put this back in that hole I was in previously. All right, you know what, this is gonna work a lot better. All right, so I'm gonna whip around, back the trail up to the wall here. <laughs> I could not imagine doing this loaded, guys. So if that truck wasn't there, that day cab, I could have probably whipped the trail around, but I know as soon as I did it, I would have probably caught his front end with the back of the trailer. So we're gonna do one complete giant circle here. Make sure I don't take out the back side of my trailer here. As you can see, I can see the damn trailer. You gotta get far enough away from the wall because when you start doing this, the trailer starts walking back and you gotta make sure there's nothing on the back side there. See, that was the much, I mean, it kind of looked dumb, but that was a smarter way to do it because I, I knew if I would have tried that with that truck there, I probably would have took the front end of that truck when the trailer started walking back. All right. So far, Insta Go, Insta 360 Go 2 has not failed me yet right now. It's also probably helps it's colder outside right now. So let's see if I can at least get some of this decent POV footage for you guys. Uh, this is called 4th Street, yeah, that call yeah, it was 4th Street Foods and Clarion, Clarion PA or something like that. Yeah. Um, if you ever get the address of 119 North uh, PA 88, that is the address for this place because they did not give me a name and I had to drive around this little town here trying to figure out what packing, packing place, because they're all called packing, uh, was where I was picking up from. And apparently this is a live load too, which is very unusual. Uh, let me take this with me just in case it stops recording. Again. <sighs> we want dock door seven. I'm not gonna move the tandems because I need the tandems forward to get out of here. I am glad this is a 48 foot trailer too because uh, if I can actually film coming out of this town here, you will see why. I could have done it with a 53, but... <laughs> it just, this is making my life a lot easier here with this 48. And thank God it's not snowing because it's probably about a 15% grade to get up in here. Uh, door seven, right next to him.
Guys, you can see there's, I'll, I guess I'll walk over here, I'll show you. Here's what I have to work with. I have this wall, that truck there, and that little alleyway. That's what I had to work with. So I thought I made the right, de right decision to do that. Now, rule of thumb, people, if you're new to backing up, it is so much easier, unless you're in a really tight spot, to slide the tandems back because the trailer makes small movements then. So you don't have to, you won't overcorrect as much. Now, another thing is you always keep the trailer in your mirrors and you pick a reference. Like, let's say this truck. Let's say there's a truck on the other side. Well, I know if I stay about eight inches off the side of this truck here, I'm not hitting the truck on the other side. I gotta straighten out anyway, because there's a, there's a pallet, stack of pallets right over here on the other side. All right. So, you know, once you're lined up straight, that's the easy part. To be honest, this isn't that bad. You just gotta make sure you don't walk the trailer back and hit something when you're in places like this. And you gotta make sure you don't rip all your uh, flarings off the side of the truck and everything when you make these sharp turns. You gotta keep that in the back of your head. And I'm sitting on the phone, so hopefully it didn't stop recording. No, it didn't. All right. Man, I hate when they have tight doors like this because you have no idea if you're lined up with the door. I like it when you can see the, the padding on the outside of the door. I don't need these four ways either more or either. Nice and easy does it, Mr. Automatic. Come on, you're, sh there we go. We're gonna get out. I, I don't, when I, when I have small doors like this, I wanna make sure I'm in the center of the door. in it but I just know it has to be on here shortly all right well that's some POV shooting of at least this place I mean if you ever come to it I much I doubt you probably will but if you ever do it's um, oh this is for the the coolant I gotta put in my truck uh, the truck low coolant light come on and I can smell coolant I cannot find it anywhere so that's gonna be something that's gonna get dropped off at the Kenworth dealership when I take my mini vacation here to Tennessee because uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have time to play those games right now. All right, well, let's, uh, let's come back to the phone a little bit. Maybe I'll talk a second, because I know this is going to pop off at any second now. That's, that's the thing. I would like to just be able to sit here, talk, look around, you know, do an actual POV conversation with somebody. Uh, to be honest, though, I'm, I'm at like 10 minutes. This is, this is doing pretty good, but... I haven't used the phone. If I use the phone repetitively through the day, I think it retains a little bit of heat and then overheats, so. Oh, man. Uh, so I guess I just wait here to get loaded. So I, I can see this is probably gonna be a long time. I, I wish Dispatch would have told me this wasn't a preloaded trailer uh, because that's all I've ever done for Dyson, to be honest. Uh, I figured this was a, you know, when I saw the, the RT packaging, I figured it was a Tyson facility and it was a preloaded trailer. But apparently, I don't, I don't know, maybe Tyson does own this, but it's, uh, it's a live load. So I would have probably paid attention a little bit more and made sure I was here on time. Uh, technically, I would have been, but I didn't have the name of the facility. So, you know, I guess I should have asked. I just assumed that 
where the driveway or at least the road that lay, leads to this place called RT Packaging, which usually is a meat plant, you know, sometimes it's called something packaging or whatever. Uh, it just so happens to coincide with the address, so I figured that's that's where I got had to go. But after sitting there for a little bit and looking around the trailers and you know having a little bit of knowledge instead of just you know assuming, uh, I was like, man, these these are all dry van trailers. Wouldn't, wouldn't there be refrigerated trailers at a meat packing place? So I decided, you know, when dispatch hasn't got a hold of me in about 30 minutes. Um, and for some reason the, the line's busy so I'm guessing they must have a problem and you know aren't texting back I uh, I figured to look up you know just to zoom out and look up food I said look it said food packaging or food or whatever and it brought up this four street foods now there was two of them there's one on the other side of town and one here so I clicked on started clicking on them and I saw that they you know this one had reefer trailers at it and Tyson trailers so the other one technically too, but I just took a chance and luckily I, I came to the right spot. Um, you know, it, you gotta, you gotta make, sometimes you gotta make educated decisions like that. Um, I kind of was a little hesitant to just start driving around because if you just saw how small this town is and uh, where, where it's built, it's like built along this little creek or river here. I guess it's a river, built along this little river here. And like the whole town, or at least a good portion of the town's built like off the side of a cliff or a really, really steep grade. And like even this, even this place, this is built like into a really steep grade slash small mountain or hill or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a little intimidating, especially when you take to have to take like 90 degree turns. Like I had to take up the whole street to, on, I guess it's 88 to, um, you know, get over into here and stuff. And, uh, yeah, you know, I gotta have somebody talking right now. Check up number, all right. Let me go get that up for you. 